We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bearing witness that none has the right to be worshipped or unconditionally obeyed except for him. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his line messenger. We ask Allah to send his peace and blessings upon him, upon the prophets and messengers that came before him, upon his family and companions that served alongside him, and those that follow in his blessed path until the day of judgment. And we ask Allah to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, as the day of Ashura is on the horizon, I want to start from a place where a conversation was being had in the battlefield. And it wasn't a conversation between Musa alayhi salam and Fir'aun, but it was a conversation between an oppressed believer and Fir'aun hadhihi al-Ummah, the Fir'aun of this Ummah as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam called him, and he is Abu Jahl, Amr ibn Hisham. And the conversation takes place in the battlefield of Badr. The dust has still not settled. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who represented the epitome of the oppressed man. He was small in his physical stature. He was unknown in his lineage. He belonged to the lowest of economic classes. And he was a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which made him the most vulnerable class or of the most vulnerable class in Mecca. And one day, he was the first man to recite the Qur'an in front of the Kaaba. And we just left the month of the Hijjah and the scenes of the Hajj, where you saw the people in the millions around the Kaaba reciting the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once upon a time, he was the only man who stood in front of the Kaaba and recited the Qur'an out loud. Ar-Rahman, Al-Quran, Khalaq al-Insan, Al-Lamahu al-Bayat. Until that same man, the pharaoh of this ummah, stomped him and broke his collarbone and left him unconscious and almost dead. And now he's in the battlefield of Badr. The days go by and the days go by and they are switched. A day for you and a day that is hard upon you. A day of hardship and a day of ease. A day of a defeat and a day of a victory. And this time, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud who stands on the chest of that Fir'aun, of the Pharaoh of this Ummah. And the Pharaoh of this Ummah says, لَقَدْ اِرْتَقَيْتَ مُرْتَقًا صَعْبٍ يَرْوَيْهِ الْغَنَبْ You have climbed the difficult climb, O shepherd of sheep. And he asked him, لِمَا مَلْغَلَبَ Who is winning the battle? Give me your commentary. Who's winning this battle? between the believers and the disbelievers, between the kuffar of Quraysh and the believing men and women that fled their persecution, the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, liman al-ghanaba, who's winning this battle? And the last words that Abu Jahl heard before he left this world was Abdullah ibn Mas'ud saying, al-ghanaba tu lillah wa li rasulillah ya Allah. Victory belongs to Allah and belongs to the Messenger of Allah, O enemy of Allah. Those were the last words that he heard before his soul left his body. And after he was killed, the Prophet son speaking to those dead ones who persecuted and saying to them, We have found what our Lord has promised us to be true. Have you found what your Lord has promised you to be true? And so Abu Jahl heard the words of defeat before he was killed, and he heard the words of defeat after he was killed. A Fir'aun who left this world humiliated, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surely humiliate all of the Fir'auns, all of the Pharaohs. Allahumma ameen. Now we go back to Ashura. It is not an exaggeration to say that perhaps this is the most important time in our recent lifetime to reflect upon the lessons of Ashura with what is happening to our brothers and sisters in Gaza. There may be no more important time to really absorb ourselves in the lessons of Ashura and the reflection of Ashura 
than this particular Ashura, the first Ashura since this genocide in Gaza has begun. And I want to take you to the moment where the Prophet ﷺ came into Al Medina and he asked ﷺ about what their fast was about. And the Jewish tribes of Medina were fasting to honor the victory of Musa over Fir'aun. And the Prophet said, We are closer to Musa than you. We have a greater right. So we too will observe this fast out of gratitude of the day that Musa was given victory over the Fir'aun. The day that the Fir'aun drowned in the sea while Musa alayhi salam and his followers had the sea parted for them. The way that this story started was the mother of Musa alayhi salam throwing him into a river to protect him from the brutality of this Pharaoh. And the way the story ended was this young man now walking between the parted seas and then the sea engulfing and drowning the Fir'aun with the same punishment, the same terror and tremor that the mother of Musa once fe feared for him as a baby. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has days like this and days like that. And what I want you to appreciate before we get into all of the lessons of Ashura is that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered the Muslims to fast this day in al Madinah. Mecca was still under the occupation of the disbelievers. They were technically still a people in exile. They were still fresh in the taste of the oppression of Mecca. They had not yet experienced Fatah Mecca. They had not yet experienced the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were still a few people. But they fasted that day out of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the victory that he gave to Musa alayhi salam and with an understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives victory to the believers. It is only a matter of when and it is only a matter of how. It is never a matter of if. Allah gives victory to the believers, but perhaps not in the way that you want and not at the time that you want. But victory is promised. The promise of Allah, He does not betray His promise. Most people can't think. Most people can't grasp. They can't see past the circumstance that's immediately in front of them. They can't see past the dunya that they are living in at this moment. Now, subhanAllah, as we look at this day of Asura, what I want you to realize is that it is not only that the Prophet ﷺ ordered the believers to pass that day in gratitude to the victory of Musa ﷺ, even though the Prophet ﷺ had not yet been given victory. But I want you to think about the decades of oppression that Fir'aun wreaked on this earth before the moment that he was drowned. What happened to the hundreds of thousands perhaps of shuhada? of martyrs that Fir'aun massacred. What about them? Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to give them victory? Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not give them what was promised to them? Were they're not vulnerable mothers and children that begged to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while Fir'aun wreaked his tyranny on earth? A core collection of the catalog of atrocity we see happening in Gaza right now with the Pharaoh of this day. Were there not women and children that begged Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for years and people that waited for the destruction of Fir'aun? Did Allah let them down? Absolutely not. They had no doubt when they made their dua that the day would come that, fir that the Fir'aun would drown in this life and that victory would be achieved. But they also understood in the nas al-shahab. It is either victory in this world or it is martyrdom. And that too is victory. You see, as Ibn Mas'ud stood on the chest of Abu Jahab and said, Al-Ghalaba to Lillah, victory is for Allah. There are also other companions. 
who had a spear put right through them. And they say, Fustu wa Rabbil Ka'b. I have succeeded by the Lord of the Ka'b. That was their personal victory that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted to them of Shahada. Because the moment that they left this world, they knew that the promise of Allah was true before their soul even left this body. Because the Prophet says that the Shaheed, the martyr, sees their place in Jannah at the first strike. Before Asya السلام, could feel the full thrust of that boulder hitting her. And this was a woman of perfect Iman, perfect faith. Did Allah not hear her du'a? When she said, Rabbi bin li inda kabaytan fil jannah. Oh Allah, build for me with you a palace in paradise. Did Allah not hear the dua of a woman with perfect iman, strong, as the boulder was falling on top of her? If you were an onlooker, maybe you would think her dua was in nothing because you would have seen her body shed to pieces the way that we see our brothers and sisters in Gaza literally shred to pieces. But before her soul even left her body, before she could even feel the pain of that boulder, she already experienced the pleasure of her paradise. Asya had victory over the Fir'aun. Asya had victory over the Fir'aun. Even if the witnesses saw a defeat, Asya was victorious. Musa was victorious. We know that on this day as well, that the beloved grandson of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Hussein Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu marched forth against the tyrants of his day because the tyrants exist in every time. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala granted him victory, but not like the victory of Musa over Fir'aun, like the victory of Asya over Fir'aun. Allah granted him a shahada. And then Hussein Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu's body was also dismembered. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards the souls. The believer has a different way of thinking about things. We don't believe that victory is relegated or limited to worldly circumstances of victory. We believe that victory is being pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, if Allah grants you victory over a pharaoh in this world, but that victory was granted to you despite your disobedience, despite your evil, and you had the name Muslim on you, and you said La ilaha illallah, but everything about your actions represented the opposite of La ilaha illallah, but you had material victory in this world, you still failed because you were displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Victory is not in the worldly circumstance of victory. Victory is in the soul being in a place that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ashura is a collection of this. And the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not random, dear brothers and sisters. It's not just what happened in history after, on the day of Ashura, after the death of the Prophet sallallahu with Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu. It's even before, as Imam Ahmad rahimahullah, there's a narration from him that this was the day that the Safina of Nuh alayhi salam, the ship of Noah, the ark of Noah arrived at its landing place. And subhanAllah, on that day, people drowned. And on that day, the only people that were saved were those on the Safina of Nuh alayhi salam. I ask you to reflect, dear brothers and sisters, and I come to you from the United States of America. And in Europe, they say that there's been a 400% increase in people embracing Islam since Gaza. And I tell you that there is not a khutbah that I give in my masjid, except that there's someone who embraces Islam. And that since the people of Gaza have undergone this atrocity with beautiful patience, through the ugliness of the genocide, through the ugly of this atrocity. People have seen the beauty of an Islam. They've seen the beauty of the faith of those people. That should not make us want any less to bring victory to the people of Gaza in the material sense and victory to the people of Palestine. But that should allow us to reflect that more people have boarded the Safina of Nuh alayhi salam, the Ark of Noah, in this time than any other time in our lives. More people are coming on board where true salvation and safety and victory is found. The day of Ashura is a day to reflect on the victory of Nuh alayhi salam and the people who found safety on that ship and to want to be on that ship ourselves and to bring as many people as possible onto that ship. 
The day of Ashura is a day to reflect on what true victory means. Whether it is the victory like the one of Musa السلام, over Fir'aun or like the one of Asiya السلام, over Fir'aun. What victory truly means. And every incident that has happened through Ashura is for us to go back to them and to reflect. Now when we fast, dear brothers and sisters, our Siyam, شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن The month of Ramadan came down to honor the Qur'an or the fasting of Ramadan is a celebration of the Qur'an. The day of Arafah which we have fasted is a day that honors the moment of our original covenants. The day of Ashura is to honor victory and to show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And someone might say, but in this day and age, what are we thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for in terms of the victory of Gaza? First and foremost, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessing of Iman. Alhamdulillah ya'na ni'mat al-Iman. Alhamdulillah ya'na ni'mat al-Islam. All praises be to Allah for the blessing of faith, for the blessing of truth, and being on the side of truth and justice. I don't care what the odds are against the people of Palestine, against the people of faith. I ask Allah that all of us be on the side of faith and the side of truth and the side of justice. And may Allah not let us incline towards the oppressors in any way whatsoever. I don't care what they have. I care what we have. And so gratitude to Allah that we have the content that brings victory in this life and the next. That we have the substance. As the Prophet ﷺ and his desperate followers in Medina started to fast this day, knowing that one day Allah would give the Prophet ﷺ victory like he gave his brother Moses, his brother Musa ﷺ victory. So we have the content and we thank Allah for that and we reflect upon that. Secondly, the Prophet ﷺ said, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ mu'min." How wonderful is the affair of the believer. وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدًا إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ And nothing or no one has this except for the believer. إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْرٍ Everything that happens to the believer is good. لَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ No one has this except for a believer. When good comes to him. إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَقْرَى شَكَرًا When good comes to him, he says, Alhamdulillah, he's grateful. وَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ And that's better for him. وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّى And when hardship strikes him. Sabara, he's patient. وَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ And that's better for him. No one has this except for the believer. No one has this mindset. That whatever happens to me, Alhamdulillah. That whatever happens to us, Alhamdulillah. So long as you are not able to take away my deen and that I attain true victory, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. The shaheed in Gaza does not feel sorry for himself or herself. The tyrant, the Zionist tyrant that murders our people in Gaza will certainly feel sorry when they encounter what they have been promised instead. And I give you this, dear brothers and sisters. On this day of Ashura, and in fact on every day, the true defeat of Fir'aun was not the day that he drowned. It's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, النَّارُ يُعْرَضُونَ عَلَيْهَا That النَّارُ, the fire, Allah states, starts this verse with, it is the fire that they are presented to every morning and every night. The Fir'aun is presented to the fire every single morning and every night. And the fire of hell is far worse than drowning in the sea. Every day he is dipped into that fire, morning and evening. وَدُوًا وَعَشِيرًا until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَدْخِلُوا آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ أَشَدَّ الْعَذَابِ Enter, O people of Fir'aun, into the worst of punishment. And you know what, dear brothers and sisters? Fir'aun had no children. Fir'aun had no kids. So who is Allah Azza wa referring to when he says, آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ Some of the scholars, they say the people of Fir'aun are the people surrounding Fir'aun, his generals and those that participate in the tyranny. And some of them said, مَنْ عَلَى دِينِهِ وَعَلَى مَنْهَجِهِ وَعَلَى مَذْهَبِهِ Those that were on his way, his religion, his methodology, his way of oppression. All of these people are Ala Fir'aun. They're all the people of Fir'aun. The question that we ask ourselves, are we the people of Musa? 
Are we the people of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Are we the people of Ibrahim alayhi salam? Are we the people of Nuh alayhi salam? If we are, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتَ بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ فَرِحِينَ بِمَا أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلٍ These people that have been killed are in Jannah. قَتْلَانَا فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَقَتْلَاكُمْ فِي النَّةِ Our dead are in paradise, your dead are in hellfire. Look at Fir'aun now and look at all of the mothers and children that we have never heard of and what they achieve right now. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ even seeing the hairdresser of the daughter of Fir'aun and her musk on the night of an Isra'u and Mi'raj. How many mothers and children that are unnamed casualties of Fir'aun are in Jannah eating from its fruits in joy? And every day Fir'aun, even when the world has moved on from him in his palaces and his tyranny, every day he is dipped in the fire two times until the greater punishment will come to him. So why do we fast? It's not about circumstance. قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَطَّاعِمُ الشَّاكِمْ لِمَنْ زِيَدِ الصَّابُ The one who eats and is grateful is like the one who fasts and is patient. It's not about your circumstances. It's about your gratitude to Allah. The one who's given worldly victory and thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like the one who is killed and thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who loses limbs but doesn't lose their life is like the one who loses their life if they are patient for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who has a heart and an intention to support the oppressed, to support the truth, to support the people of the truth, no matter what the circumstances are, are like those people. Because their hearts are there. Allah knows who you are. Allah knows what's in your heart. Allah knows what's in your dua. Victory is promised to the believers. Ashura is a celebration of victory. We celebrate the victory of the past and we anticipate the victory of the future. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the victory of the present, which is the victory of being upon La ilaha illallah. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأمات إنك سميع قريب مجيب دعوات اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا واعف عنا ولا تعذبنا ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنا كوننا من القاسرين اللهم أصلح أحوال إخواننا المنكوبين في كل مكان اللهم أصلح أحوال إخواننا المنكوبين في كل مكان اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في فلسطين وفي السودان وفي كل مكان اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأفرتنا وإخواننا بين المتعلمين عباد الله أن الله يرمو بالعدل والإحسان وإنفاء بالقربى ويمنع للفحشاء والمنكر والباقي يعبكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على النعمة الذي ذكركم ولا ذكر الله أكبر في الله نعم ونعم 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 